Cerrone, he's just been around for so long and is such a uh, you know a staple of the UFC roster that I think that you know, Darren Till, he can now parlay this into something really, really big. And to be mm -hmm. honest with you, that was probably the best. I mean, no, and I love Mickey because Mickey's my friend, but that was a much more impressive performance from Darren Till than Mickey's performance over um, Sage or over um, CM Punk. Mm, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm not overly enthralled about talking about Mickey Gall's win over... CM Punk or Sage Northcott. He's fighting. You follow Sage Northcott on Instagram? Uh, no. Why is he's it? He's a lovely kid, I'm sure. You but like him? He, he, you know, Jesus Christ. The cheese is on the next level, man. The cheese is on the next level. I like him, don't get me wrong. He's a lovely kid. He's a lovely kid. And, he's, and I like what he does. I like what he's all about. But it, just go to his page. I'm I here right know. now. I'm looking. Me... No, no, not his page. His stories. His stories, man. Oh, his goes, stories. Hey, what's up? Kill it, guys. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, okay. Everybody and then we like winked at the camera thing. and stuff like that. And he's like, "Whoa, dude, stop yes. it, stop it, just stop it." You know what? In Everybody. fact, a lot of people need to just generally stop it on social media. Do you know what I mean? The preaching, the preachiness on social media has has gotten to an all time high that I just can't take anymore. Yeah. You know, all these quotes about peace and love and unity, but then you know them and they're a bad-tempered, stressing motherfucker. And I'm like, that is not you. And then and then, why, why, why does everyone have to preach and show off and brag constantly? It just gets on my nerves. Have social media, have fun, post pictures, do this, do that, show what you're into. But please do not preach at me on a daily basis. You, you know, know what, what it saying? is, though? It, because people are addicted to... Um just in general, Comments, human beings, the, the likes. Well, yeah, we're, well, it's it's accolades, right? Human beings, we we we're designed to want to feel great, and it's the now instead of doing something great, everybody can just log on to Facebook, log on to Twitter, whatever it is, and without doing anything, without lifting a finger, they get to feel as if they're doing some sort of social justice for the world, like they're helping the world, like they're creating peace, when they're just writing some dumb sentence that somebody else wrote in a different way two minutes before. It's nothing original. No, 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 of course. I'm, I'm just trying to Google it now to find, but I read somewhere that um, um, it has an effect on your brain. Like it releases endorphins or something like that when you get, oh no, it's dopamine. Social media triggers a dopamine high. Yeah. That's that's what it is. Yeah, and, and so that's why they do all this. So they put these stupid, uh, you know, these stupid cookie cutter phrases, you know, that you see on people's walls when you walk into the house, you know, this is a place of love or whatever. And, and, and then they put it on there and it was like, yeah, it's great. Love that. Or they take like something that a psychologist, want, uh, sorry, not a psychologist, a philosopher once said and put it on there and try and pass it off as their own. And it just gets on my tits, just gets on my tits in a big way. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So if you're one of those people and you're out there and you're posting bullshit quotes all day, every day, give it a rest. Yeah, Give Sage. Rest. Yes, what Sage you Northcutt. Them? You don't do that. I don't see you posting all that type of stuff. No. A little, little bit of funny stuff, a little bit of this and that, stuff of you and your kids. It's great. That's that's what it's about, right? Yeah, I agree. I mean, I, I don't I don't even when I'm on the podcast or if I'm doing stand up, I don't even I can't even say just like I if I'm trying to write a joke or if I'm trying to write something on social media, I can't even just I, I won't even waste my time writing something that is just generic and that everybody agrees like like racism is bad. Yeah, no shit. No shit. Racism is bad. There's nothing interesting there for me. Yeah. So I, my mind won't even go there to say something about it or write something. I would much rather take the position of let me say something that's funny and racist and defend it. You know what I'm saying? Because that's more exciting to me than just going like, hey, guys, you know what? Uh, women shouldn't be sexually harassed in Hollywood. Yeah, no shit. Let's, you know, let's yeah, move on. Absolutely. It, it, it's just everyone spends so much time just kind of, it's it, it's an echo chamber. That's really what it is. So everyone just kind of says the same thing they want to hear. And then if they disagree with you on social media, they fucking report you and block you. And you're like, How, what type of world do you want to live in where it's just people saying the exact same things you're saying? Do you know what? You can sum, you can sum them up in two words. Preachy cunts. Preachy cunts. Preachy cunts. Yeah. If you're a preachy cunt... Please don't. Just, just, just try and get off my page, or I will block you. And in fact, I have to block a lot of people these days. My God, the hate is on an all-time. Is that is that an all-time high? A lot of GSP fans. I'll tell you what. They're saying the Madison Square Garden isn't selling out, but they're bringing out the haters on the out the woodwork on social yeah. media. That's for sure. Um, all right. What else have we got, Lewis? I want. Well, I we going? To, we're talking about you and uh, GSP uh, at the Garden. Um, Tyron Woodley, actually. 
Um, I guess he said he, he he wants to fight the winner of you versus GSP now. Um, I feel like it's kind of like almost like it's cyclical. Not going to happen. Not going to happen. You want to touch me. You want to punch me in the face right now. Touch it. Touch it. I haven't had a carb since 2002. You want to touch that shit? Not going to happen. Is that Step Brothers? Step Brothers. There you go. I don't know why I went into that. No, it's not going to happen, is it? Because, listen, if GSP wins, then fair enough, it might happen. But, you know, I'm going to stand here and touch wood and all that shit. He ain't going to win. I'm very confident in this fight, and I'm very confident of still being the champion uh, two weeks from today. Hopefully. Fingers crossed. I guess we're going to find out. Um, now, if GSP wins, then maybe that is a natural fight. Um but there's no way I can go from beating George to then fighting Tyron Woodley another welterweight. No, it's great for Tyron to say that because it's a lose-lose um, situation for him. Maybe he comes... So, sorry, pardon me. A win-win situ- situation. Sorry, that coffee's repeating again. Um, you know, he comes up to, to middleweight. If he wins, amazing. If he loses, it doesn't matter. He's still the welterweight champion. Mm. Kind of the same way why I'd love to fight Daniel Cormier. Me and Cormier are saying the same shit. He's saying it. I'm saying it. But it's all a bit of fun and games. It's all a bit of tongue-in-cheek. Hey, don't get me wrong. If they want to do it, I'd do it. I, I fought at 205. But it ain't going to happen. You know, we're having a bit of fun with it. Now, Tyron's saying that he's just trying to throw his name into the mix. Um, but, you know, realistically, there's no way the UFC are going to let that happen next. Yeah, this is the quote. St. Pierre will probably call it McGregor. Um, but he's going to have to be honest with the fans and say, I'm here for money. And that's OK. There's no shame in that. Just know that I'm going to call him out on that. Win, lose or draw. I'm going to want to fight the winner of that fight, Bisping or George. Then I'm going to want to come back and see all this fresh new talent in the welterweight division. And I'm going to want to show them a lesson, too. Um, Ooh, Tyron's going to call him out on that. The only problem with that is that nobody gives a fuck what he says. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, listen, I, I said it before. Here's George's plan. And, and it, he keeps talking about how it's in the contract. It's in the contract that I fight Whitaker. Um, but he ain't. He ain't going to fight Whitaker. It doesn't matter if he's if it's in the contract or not. I believe it is in the contract. But all he's going to do is say, I don't fancy doing that. And and if you want me to fight again and, and maybe sell a lot of pay-per-views, it's going to be someone else. And the UFC would fold, I, I would imagine. Of course they would. Yeah, exactly. Well, it's, it's, exactly. it's like saying, do you guys he, want... He wants to beat me, go back down to welterweight, beat Tyron, and then face Connor, and then beat all three, and then retire and make a ton of money. You, you know, know what? And the UFC probably want that to happen. I don't... By that, I don't mean beat Connor. I mean beat me. Beat me, then beat uh, either Woodley or, or go straight to Connor, you know? Because what he would do is... You know, he doesn't need to fight regularly. He'll then lose the weight. He'll diet. He'll run. He'll do all that good stuff. And then fight some some point towards the end of next year. In the meantime, Connor can fight Diaz or Ferguson, whichever one it's going to be. You know, and then he can take some time off. Uh, McGregor I'm talking about. And in that meantime, um, um, what's his face? St. Pierre can be losing the weight to then make, uh, meet at a catch weight and maybe 155 or 165 or whatever it is. You know what I mean? Because that would be a big, big money fight. Now, I think, you know, the the, the, the skepticism in me, the skeptic inside me, uh, they probably want that to happen. If I was winning the UFC, that's what I'd want to happen. My job is to play a spoiler, wreck all those plans and beat the shit out of George St. Pierre. And the way I'm performing, I'm knocking guys out every round. Every round I'm sparring, or, or every time I'm sparring, I'm knocking guys out. Now, I, I've said that before, but it truly is happening. So I honestly believe I can stop George. I can knock him out. I can beat him. Uh, I respect his wrestling. I'm not terrified of his wrestling. I'm prepared for that. But I think I'm going to stop him. I'm going to stop the little Frenchie in, in, uh, in Madison Square Garden. As, as a fan of the sport, though, is there even a little part of you that would like to see George St. Pierre beat you, drop to 170, beat Woodley, then drop down to beat Connor. Come on, just 1% as a fan of the sport. How cool would that be? If you're a fan of the sport, maybe, <laughs> but if, you, if you're a fan of the sport, kiss my ass <laughs> at the same time, in the same token, you know? Um, what about a fan of the guy that's had the most wins ever, the guy that beat all odds and became the champion? It's true. Uh, who's a loudmouth and pisses everybody off and rubs everyone the wrong way and talks shit on his podcast every week. Yeah, fuck that. Uh, That's a better story, to be honest with you. George St. Pierre hasn't faced any real adversity in a very, very long time. And even when he did lose to, to fucking um, Matt Sarah, he came back and avenged that loss so badly that he nearly erased it from everybody's mind. 
You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Well, I'll tell you what as well. Perillo, the great Jason Perillo, uh, emailed me uh, uh, a highlight of um, here, here it is. I'll, I'll forward it to you. Please. Forward. Uh, a highlight. You can't watch it now, it's too long. But uh, it's basically, it's done really well. You know the movie Bloodsport, you know, where, you know, you're all over, different fighters from all over the world. They all fight in the Kumite. And they kind of make that, and it's like George fighting in Bloodsport against all the different opponents. And it's put into like a, um, you know, kind of like a movie, if you will, kind of like Street Fighter, you know. Yeah. And it's really good. But uh, the, the, the point of Perillo sending it to me, he was like, look at all these guys. Look at them. Look at who they are. Look at the size of them. BJ Penn, the great BJ Penn, who re- realistically is a 145er. Thiago Alves, who now fights at 155. Cairo Parisian. Uh, Matt Hughes, you know, I mean, who was, you know, a 170 pounder, but still, you know. Uh, who else? Who- 